Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to see if I can build a decent gaming PC for under $370. Now, I will admit, in order for me to get all of the parts that I needed, it took me about three weeks. I used a combination of eBay and my local Craigslist, but I got a good feeling that what we have here will actually make a really great 1080p gaming machine, and not to mention emulation. It's going to be great at that also. First things first, the whole base of the system. These are some of my favorite systems to work with. This is an old office PC and it just happens to be a Dell Optiplex 720. I picked this up on eBay for $135, no RAM, no hard drive, but the good thing about this one, it actually has the i7-4790 in it. It's a non-K variant. But with that, we have four cores and eight threads up to four gigahertz. You can actually find these for around 165 to 180 with RAM and a hard drive if that's the route you want to go. I'll leave some links in the description. Next on the list, we have the graphics card. Now, we all know that it can be hard to come across a graphics card, but I've actually had really good luck in this weird time we're in on my local Craigslist. So I would highly recommend checking it out. But uh, I found this listed on my local Craigslist for $165. In the ad, the seller stated that this was an OEM RX 480. So I was like, okay, cool, $165. I'm going to offer him $145, see if I can pick it up. I was able to get it at that $145 price tag. I did have to drive 10 minutes to get it. But when I got home and tested this out, it actually happened to be an RX 580. It's the 4 gigabyte variant. And uh, like I mentioned, it was listed as a 480. So I did get a little bit of a deal on this one. Now I did clean this up and replace the thermal paste on it. I mean, it was pretty dusty as you can see and that thermal paste was dried out. I just used some Cooler Master Master Gel that I had laying around. And once that was finished, it cleaned up pretty nicely as you can see. I also had to pick up a SATA to six pin power connector because this Optiplex doesn't have it. I had a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue laying around. I also wanted to opt for a 240 gigabyte boot drive. So I went with a cheaper PNY SSD and I also picked up 16 gigabytes of DDR3 running at 1600 megahertz from eBay. This was a used set here, and I got it for $48 shipped to the door. Now, when picking up an old PC like this, the first thing I would recommend doing is replacing the thermal paste on the CPU cooler. This is an older office PC, and these are usually left on all the time, so that thermal paste was dried up on this. I just went ahead and replaced it on that i7-4790. This unit that I picked up didn't have any RAM or storage, so I need to go ahead and slam my storage in here. Luckily, the bracket was still here. Most of the time when you pick these Optiplexes up with no storage at all, you will not get a bracket, but you can always make this work. 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue. I'm just gonna store my games on this and it'll slide right in. Now I wanna install my 240 gigabyte SSD. That's what Windows is gonna be installed on. And for this, I just picked up a cheap $7 bracket on Amazon. This will hold two 2.5 inch drives and uh, we just have that one 240 gigabyte SSD in here. So I'm just going to slide it right in here and it should sit nice and neat. Now I just need to plug those drives in. Now that I have my drives installed, it's time to install the RAM. And as you can see, we do have four slots in this PC. I went with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 running at 1600 megahertz. That's basically as fast as you can go. You don't have to go quad channel with it. You can run dual channel, but I found such a deal on this. I figured I'd go ahead and pick it up. So I'm almost done with the build here. The next thing I need to do is install my six pin power adapter for the GPU. This specific Dell has a proprietary 290 watt power supply. The CPU I'm using here will pull a maximum of around 86 watts and while gaming around 65. Usually, these 580s do pull around 140 to 160 watts, but this is an OEM variant, and it should only pull around 125 to 130. By the end of this video, we'll take a look at total system power consumption to see if we're overdrawn from that 290 watt power supply, but I suspect that we will have plenty of power for this little setup here. So it's finished. It's definitely not a pretty build, but it should be a very functional build at 1080p. And when it comes to emulation, we should be able to get away with up to PS3 out of this little machine here. So I went ahead and installed Windows 10 on that SSD. Everything's been working really well so far. I've installed some benchmarks, some games, and emulators that we're going to be testing out in this video. What I'm going to do now is just connect this to my game capture so we can get a better look at the screen, and uh, we'll see how this thing performs. All right, so here it is. As you can see, we have that i7-4790, four cores, eight threads. We have a base clock of 3.6 with a boost up to 4.0. 16 gigabytes of DDR3 running at 1600 megahertz and the RX 580 4 gigabyte model. This is the OEM variant, so it's not as powerful as the higher end variants, but uh, I think it will do a pretty decent job. 
This is a fourth gen i7. I mean, it's definitely an older i7. This is not going to compete with the new 5000 series Ryzen's. I mean, it won't even compete with the 3000 series Ryzen's. But for gaming and emulation at 1080p, I really do think it can pull it off. First thing I always like to do is run some benchmarks. I just went through a few. First up, Geekbench 5, single core, 994, multi, 3782. Definitely looking really low for 2021, but for an old 4th gen i7, I think it's doing pretty well. Next up, we have some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid. Total score, 26,008. Fire Strike came in with an 11,335. And finally, Time Spy with a 4,112. Now these aren't scores to write home about, but uh, for a budget build, it's looking pretty decent. Now it's time to move into some real world gaming and see how this thing performs. First on the list, we have Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, high settings. I got an average of 72 FPS out of this one. And if you did need a little more out of it, you could always drop some of these down to medium, but at high, it's working great. Here's Injustice 2, 1080p, high, it's going to run at 60 all day. This RX 580 can definitely handle this game, and it looks like the i7-4790 works really well with this. We're only at around 19% utilization, and it's pulling 30 watts. Here's Doom Eternal, 1080p, high settings, we got an average of 71, and I was actually surprised, I didn't think we'd be able to run this game this well. Moving over to Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low, 90% resolution scale, I got an average of 59 FPS, it does dip down below 60, but you could get this to run at a constant 60 by dropping that resolution scale down to around 75%, or even just taking the resolution to around 900p. Call of Duty Warzone did really well, 1080p with a high normal mix, unfortunately with the latest update to this game I cannot get Afterburner running so I just uh, left a few others up in the top left hand corner, but it kind of gives us all the information we need. GTA 5, 1080p, high settings, we got an average of 92 FPS, still one of my favorite games, looks great at 1080p, those high settings really make everything pop, and this RX 580 paired with the 4790 can run it. And the final game I wanted to test was Red Dead 2, I just ran the built-in benchmark, 1080p with a medium high mix, we got a minimum of 33 maximum of 94, and an average of 77. Now it's time to see how this thing handles emulation, and first up we have PS2 using PCSX2, 1080p, DirectX 11 back end, one of the harder ones to run, Gran Turismo 4, running at a constant 60. There's a chance we could actually take this up to 1440, but uh, I just left it at 1080p, I still think it looks great. Wii U using SimU, 1080p, Vulcan back in, locked at 30, runs Breath of the Wild really, really well. I did try to unlock this to 60, but it only runs at around 48 FPS, so setting it to 30 is definitely the way to go, especially at a 1080p resolution. And finally, PS3 using RPCS3. We have Skate 3, which is kind of my go-to test. This is a harder one to run. This emulator loves extra cores and threads. We only have four cores, but we have those eight threads. And really, this is the only fourth gen Intel CPU I've ever been able to get this to run at full speed on. So going into this, I was a little worried about power consumption given that we only have that 290 watt power supply. It's a proprietary Dell power supply given they are pretty inexpensive to replace but they're really hard to upgrade, they just don't offer any upgrade options. Through all of my testing, I've been plugged into a kilowatt meter to the wall. At idle, we're at 42, that's a bit high for, uh, you know, 2021 standards. While gaming, we averaged 218 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall with the GPU and the CPU totally maxed out 
was 247 watts. So we are getting close to that 290 watt limit, but we didn't exceed it, and this is actually looking pretty good. So in the end, I do think that this made a great little 1080p budget gaming machine. All in to build this machine was $365, and I feel like that's actually a decent deal. I know it sounds high for a used budget PC, but you gotta keep in mind, with PC part availability and GPU prices right now, this is actually looking like a really good deal if you want to get into gaming right now and not break the bank. So if you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links in the description, but keep in mind your best bet to pick up a GPU at a decent price is check your local listings. Craigslist, OfferUp, there's a few more. I tried Facebook Marketplace, but it looks like the scalpers have taken over there also. The best luck that I've had is Craigslist. I was able to get a 1660 earlier this year for a decent deal. And this RX 580 for $145, which was listed as an RX 480. So that's where I've had my best luck this year. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this rig, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.